Welcome to Physics Twist, this week in science and technology, powered by physics education. In this episode of Physics Twist, the CSIRO announces the end of financial year taxonomy bonanza, some big space news, which I'm very excited about, and the plastic bag ban comes into effect, which Quill is very excited about. Mm -hmm. We're very different people, you and I, aren't we? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. (laughs) Completely different set of interests. That's okay. I think mine is better, but, you know, to each their own. So, before we get into that, though, um, some business to attend to, Mm -hmm. which is um, thank you to all for your guesses for the secret sound from the past episodes that we've done. Um, And I'm very pleased to announce that we have a winner, finally. We have a winner. Finally. Yay. Um, So, congratulations to Jasper. You were correct. Good work, Jasper. Well done, Jasper. Uh, We'll be in contact very soon to arrange delivery of some nifty prizes to you. So definitely looking forward to speaking with you. Um, And then we'll have a new secret sound coming in the following weeks. We will. But um, apologies that it took so long. Yeah, so Jasper, you're going to get an extra few little cool things in that pack because Duncan and I have been having some issues with getting us both into the recording studio at the same time. Busy time. This is a sciencey kind of time of year. Mm -hmm. And we've been bustling out there, filling the schools with information. Yep. So we haven't had recording time and we haven't then been looking at our uh, schedules for sending out these gifts. So Jasper, you're going to get some few extra cool things in the mail yep. for, for waiting so patiently after you've discovered our secret sound. We don't know what they are yet, but no. it's going to be good. We're going to hit the physics shop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which is a fantastic shop, yeah, I must say. fantastic shop. Beautiful. So well done, Jasper. Uh, looking forward to talking to you. Uh, should we just jump right into the stories of the, well, I wouldn't say of the week, of the past few weeks. Yeah, let's get cracking. Yeah, cool. So, first things first, the CSIRO National Research Collections Australia, now there's a mouthful, um, has announced that they've revealed over 200 newly discovered species, or at least that they've named these 200 newly discovered species. Wow. Yeah, that's when? a lot of species. In the past financial year, I guess. Just this year? Yeah, just this year. So, um, I like how they call it the end of financial year stock take. I love that they call it the taxonomy <laughs> yeah. time. That's Taxon- amazing. Taxonomy time. <laughs> did they say that or did you just say that? You just said that. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a funny joke. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize that I made that joke. Um, so, taxonomy, for anyone who is not aware, is basically the practice of naming species. Yeah. Scientifically. Um, Quill, you know a lot more about this than I do. Do you want to jump in and maybe explain a bit more about that? About taxonomy? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, taxonomy is often branching things and classing things into specific areas. So, it's just like saying you might have in your fridge, you might have the fruit section and the totally. vegetable section. Oh, that's such a good analogy. And the dairy section. And mm. maybe you've got the section where your mum and dad keep all their lollies and all the things you're not supposed to have at the back of the fridge or something like that. There we like go. That. So Average. We like to collect things into, into groups. We class them into groups. Um, mm-hmm. And this can be called their taxonomy, their groups. And this is, this, this is often when you're talking about animals or plants or whatever you're talking about. This is often done right down to a fine level. So you wouldn't just say, hey, this is a fruit. You might then start to say, this is a citrus fruit, right? So you're getting really defined, clear yeah. examples. So, for example, we have our you know, our mammals or we've got like our marsupials, which are very distinct. They are mammals, but in fact, they are distinct, um, a certain kind of mammal that we only mostly have yeah. in Australia. And they can get really, really specific, can't they? Like they could be like, oh, this is a very specific type of possum, but this one has a bit of red on the end of its tail. Exactly. And that's a completely different species, so it needs a totally different name. Exactly. Sometimes. That's right. So, um, yeah, in this um, 200 newly discovered or newly named species, there are apparently three new fish. Cool. Three new plants. Mm -hmm. And 206 new insects. This is... This is... (laughs) So it's slightly unbalanced. (laughs) This is... There is so many insects out there. Yeah. So... Like, this is one of these crazy things. Like, finding new fish is amazing still. Uh, do, you, do you know, are they, are they like, freshwater fish? Are they sea fish? Because the sea, I, I know we're constantly know. finding more and more in the sea because mm. we're getting better and better at exploring the depths of the sea, right? Yeah, Some absolutely. really deep, dark places in the sea. So we're getting better and better at finding that. But there's so many insects out there. And it, so it's many. often this is the case. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure I read somewhere once, what's the thing, like, the group of animals that weighs the most... On Earth, and if you actually think it's actually insects, yeah. So forget about elephants or something big. There is so many insects that yeah. if you put them all together, that's the most of the weight of an animal. It's though. something like, I can't remember the exact number, but they say that like for every human, there's you know a billion insects yeah. or something like yeah. like that. So they outweigh us massively. Mm. 
Don't quote me on that. It's not a billion, but it's something. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a big number. <laughs> so would you like to hear more about those new insets? Yeah. Great. You ready with a horn? <laughs> so it says here, yep, 73 new types of ant. Nice. We love ants. 38 new beetles. Ooh. And 21 new flies. How exciting. That Everyone is, loves flies. That is exciting. Yeah. The amazing thing so much about insects too is we don't even recognize the roles that insects can play mm. in our environment. So insects... Super important. Everyone goes, ah, oh, mosquitoes. But there is all sorts of roles we don't understand um, with insects and with all the different animals we have in our on our planet. Um, and we don't know what's going to happen. Like, what are the effects if one of these plant if one of these insects mm. we don't have something? There's all kinds of flaw effects. Does that insect feed this specific kind of bird, which might yeah. feed this specific kind of mammal? Without that, you know, all sorts of crazy things happen. So, yeah, the mosquito example is a really good one. People talk about like, oh, if I could just do one thing, it would be remove all mosquitoes. And you're mm. like, well, what about the things that feed on those mosquitoes? Exactly. And then the entire world is just going to collapse. Exactly. Yeah. So sure, things- are fun to scratch though. A lo- I don't get bitten. <clears throat> That's amazing. Mosquitoes. Like Actually, them. this is something I'd like to research a little bit more, but mosquitoes seem to have preference for certain blood types. Now, I've read whether it's blood types or whether it's the warmth of people's blood. Mm. So, certain people run like a bit warmer than other people. So, are you cold-blooded like a lizard? Is that yeah, I am. <laughs> like, I don't get that cold most of the time. Little, little lizard. <laughs> <laughs> but so, in my family, me, my dad, and my brother don't get bitten, but my little sister... And my stepmom oh, okay. gets savage. So, like, we basically just need to have one of them around as like, yeah. a kind of a beacon <laughs> to get eaten. And we don't have to worry about one putting of those it little, in your... um, mosquito th- traps you put under the table. Yeah, yeah, that's that? right. <laughs> that's so, so funny. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, so there's more news. And oh. they, they, they have this... Um, this research vessel, a ship called cool. the Investigator, Lucky. and they, although they weren't included in this end of financial year stock take, they've said that there's ten new species of fish. That they mm. discovered on this thing called the Investigator. Cool. Which was discovered during a voyage of the Northwest Shelf in late 2017 that are yet to be scientifically named. Wow. And so the question now is, yeah. what's the Northwest Shelf? Let's type that in. Uh, if I'm thinking shelf, it's <laughs> going to be a spot Antarctica. where you're thinking really deep water too. Because normally at your shelves, you've got the, the edges of your kind of, kind of continental plates and the right. shelves are usually where they drop off. You know, yeah, like in Nemo, sense. when you totally. have the drop off. Yeah. So when you get to these edges, you suddenly go to E-A-C, very, very yeah. deep water. Yeah. <laughs> E-A-C. So you're looking at this very deep water and like getting down to explore that very deep water is, is a bit tricky. So what are we looking at here? It's a shelf of Western Australia. Oh. Off the Pilbara region. Perfect. There you go. Cool. So must be, um, must be good for fish. Mm. So, yeah, I think that's all I really had on that one. But good on the CSIRO National Research Collections Australia. That's great. Doing fantastic work. Um, but, yeah, insects, abundant, diverse. They are. Love them. Love them. Yeah, I actually don't care for insects personally. I anyway. like insects. What about a lady beetle or a stick yeah, insect? Also don't, you, don't, you know, plastic bags and all that. Very different. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Biology background, maybe. Oh, yeah. Maybe, oh, maybe it's part of being a hippie. Yeah, <laughs> you definitely are. <laughs> okay, shall we move on to story number two? Yeah, let's do it. This one is coming from me. I'm very excited, which is that the Japanese, they have a space agency. Space. It's a, it's a space story. We love space. Yeah, we, it's a space story. I actually do like space. I just like to tease you about loving space. Of course, and I'm I'm open to that. Yeah, I'm that's accepting fine. of that. You know, it's a past, part of my personality that I've come to embrace. I'm a hippie. You're a space nerd. That's right. Love it. <laughs> All right, get back cool. to the story. So, the Japanese they have a space agency, and they have a spacecraft called the Hayabusa Two, and they've decided that they're going to land that spacecraft on an asteroid. Cool. Right. Yeah. It's called the Ryugu. I think I'm pronouncing that mm-hmm. roughly correctly. Um, and right now, this spacecraft is approximately 40 kilometers away, sort of orbiting around the asteroid. Right. Okay, And it's actually taken a snapshot of it. Okay, cool. So what we will do, because you guys have to see this. It's so amazing that they've actually taken a, like a photo of an asteroid from only 40 kilometers cool. away while it's in space. Yeah. Um, I'll put that in the show notes, a little link to it, so you can see it for yourself. Awesome. Super cool. So this um, asteroid is about a kilometer across, which is, I guess, kind of small in the grand scheme of things, but, yeah. but still but then, large like, enough. It's not like little, like a little car or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but the spacecraft that they're landing, the, the Hayabusa 2, it is small. It's about the size of a fridge. 
Okay. What? Yeah, it's quite small. Yeah. <laughs> and it gets seriously, it gets way cooler than this. Wait, so, am I the only person envisaging like a fridge that's striding yeah, exactly. around in space? <laughs> like, oh, I'm just reminded of like um, Wally, that sort of thing. Mm. I'm just imagining that. Yeah. Um, oh, no. You know what it is? Wallace and Gromit. Yes. The fridge uh, robot guy. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so that's probably going way over the heads of our younger listeners. Yes. But anyway. Um, so it's about the size of a fridge um, and it's flanked by large solar panels. Okay. And what it's going to do is it's going to sort of fly around and use these sensors to develop a three dimensional picture of the rotating asteroid. It's going to cool. do that for the next three months. And then they're going to start doing a series of experiments um, where they're trying to land on it, like land yeah. on the asteroid. That's cool. Okay? Which is insane to me. That Sounds can... like a movie, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. What's that movie called? There's a few of them. Armageddon? Totally. Yeah, 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 that's another old movie. Yeah, that's... <laughs> oh, my God, showing age. Bruce Willis, though. Fantastic. He never ages. No. <laughs> what is he, like, 39? He's got to be like a thousand. <laughs> just, just like Ben. Um, so, what's going to happen is the Hyabusa 2 is going to land on the asteroid, it's going to touch down for a second, and it's going to collect some dust from the surface mm-hmm. of the asteroid by shooting pellets at it, which I don't quite understand, but apparently that's, gonna, that's how it's going to do it. It's going to shoot pellets. It's going to shoot pellets. And, and the, retrieve the dust the is going to... Yeah, and it's going to sort of rise up and they're going to retrieve uh. it. It's also got this thing called a carry-on impactor where they're going to use an explosive charge to clean off the surface of the asteroid mm-hmm. and then get a fresh sort of like sample. Yeah, so they can kind of get a, figure out what else is on there because exactly. a lot of time what's on the top is not necessarily everything. Yeah. Cool. It gets better. Oh. The spacecraft will also drop off two tiny rovers... Awesome. On the surface. They must be tiny if they're in this fridge. So one is called Minerva, which, according to this article from the ABC, I think, is a cockroach-style rover with cameras and a thermometer. Cool. And it'll survey the surface. And the other, called Mascot, will enable the team to examine microscopic grains. Wow. There you go. That's fantastic. Now, there's a bit of um, prehistory prehistory to this. What's a precursor? Whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, So, in 2003, the Japanese Space Agency launched a mission to get samples from an asteroid called Itokawa, and they analysed how old it was. Mm -hmm. Turns out that that asteroid is only 8 million years old. And I say only. It's a baby. It's a baby. Like, in terms of how old the universe is, Mm -hmm. which is, what, 4.3 billion years old? No, wait. That's how old the Earth is. I think the universe is about 17 billion. I'll believe you on that. You're the space man. (laughs) I think it's 17. (laughs) It's um, older than us, that's for it's sure. It's a lot older than us, and if I'm wrong about that, then I'm sure... Future Duncan. Future Duncan will chime in just yeah. to... Yeah. But if not, you're not going to hear from him. Anyway, so only <laughs> 8 million years is, like, a, fra- a fraction of a second in the yeah. geological time scale. Um, so, yeah, and so they basically found that Itokawa was a stony, what they call a stony asteroid, whereas Ryugu, the one they're about to land on, mm-hmm. is called a C-type asteroid, which... Possibly has organic material and water. Wait, a what? A seed? C. The letter C. Oh, C. C type. Okay, cool. Which apparently have organic material and water. That's cool. Yeah. But, it gets weirder, 75% of asteroids are C type. So they have water and organic well, they matter. Could they have the potential to So we're going to move on to an asteroid, basically. Well, I think that's a fantastic idea. Yeah, yeah. it's plan B. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but, of course, those kind of asteroids, they don't really usually make it to Earth. So, like, having yeah. the ability to study one while it's mm. fairly close to us. It's in between Earth and... It's orbiting around Earth and, yeah. and Mars at the moment, I think. Um, Which is an important, obviously, because if it's using solar panels for its power, it'd have to be within a good range of, of the sun, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because you get this sort of um, inverse square law where the power that you get from the solar panels diminishes massively the further away you get. Yeah. Yes, so it's not like an even thing. The further away you get, you get way, way less, not just yeah. a little bit less. If you go twice as far, you get a quarter of the power. Exactly. Basically. Yeah. For those our listeners that maybe are a little young to know what the inverse square law is. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Good thinking. Um, so that's happening. And also in the future, there's going to be a NASA mission called OSIRIS-REx. Osiris Rex. Osiris Rex. Duncan, um, you brought out an outstanding space great, story yeah. today. Okay, Osiris Rex, I like um, it. Which will rendezvous with another C type asteroid mm-hmm. later this year, named not quite as well as Ryugu. This one's called 101955 Bennu. It's got a ring to it. <laughs> <laughs> what a silly name. The Japanese are much better at names. 
<laughs> yeah, and I bet those names actually have some kind of significance too. Yeah. Like if you look up what those names of those uh, asteroids are, what totally. that Japanese name means, I'm sure it has something better than 10154. Exactly. Yeah, that's a, that, one <laughs> that sounds like it was named by some sort of omniscient, you know, artificial intelligence. Mm. 101955. Yeah. Yeah. So a computer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Been busting out the big words today. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um, so there you go. That is exciting news. Um, more exciting news. It's time for fact of the week. <gasps> dun, would, dun, you, dun, 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 dun. would you believe? <laughs> I'm not going to do the theme music again on that. It was so. It was so hard. Um, fact of the week comes from space. Would you believe it? Oh, I would believe it. <laughs> I would totally believe it. Here's one I found recently. <laughs> Photons mm-hmm. generated in the sun. So photons are little packets of energy, basically. Um, of light. Of light. Yeah. yeah. So basically, yeah, when like what your eyes are seeing mm-hmm. is um, photons. Yeah. Effectively. Yeah. So photons come out of the sun. They're generated mm-hmm. in the in the core of the sun. How long do they take to get from the sun to Earth? Quill. It's a quiz. Pretty quick. How quick would you say? I don't know. I'm pointing at the answer. I, feel, I haven't got my glasses. Oh, I see. <laughs> I'm pointing at my face. <laughs> Your tiny screen. It's like I'm two I'm 33 meters. years old. I need my glasses. So, it takes eight minutes to get I from... Knew. Yeah, you need that. I, I didn't know that. I was that. trying to read your answer instead of just using my brain that already knew that. But yeah. yeah. So, it takes eight minutes. Yeah. So, we knew that. That's that's not exactly fact of the week material. Yeah. Here's fact of the week material. So, mm-hmm. eight minutes from sun to earth. From the core of the sun to the surface of the sun will take anywhere between 100,000 to 50 million years. So that's a good, a good idea of scale for you, right? Absolutely. That's a long time for that that's poor little photon to be traveling. Just to get from the center of the sun to the surface of the sun. Yeah. 50 million years and then a measly eight minutes lickety split. Here to it work. is hitting you. In your eye. So that's telling you how big that center of the sun is for it takes that long to get yeah. to the edge of the sun. Isn't that But then it only takes eight minutes to get here. Because apparently it has to travel through the sun's layers. Crazy. And it many layers. Would you like to hear about the layers of the sun? Yeah, hit me. Right. So they start at the core. Mm-hmm. Then they move to the radiative zone, which Ooh. is a thick layer where the sun generates X-rays and ultraviolet radiation. Excellent. Mm-hmm. And that's where most of the, the collisions occur. Can't mm-hmm. really say what the collisions are at this point, but anyway. I would say it would be hydrogen smashing together to form helium, helium smashing together to form carbon. Amazing. Fantastic. You know that there are collisions that are going on yeah, in there, amazing. generating light, heat, and little packets of uh, energy. Uh, photons there. Little photons, oh, energy. Yeah. Right. Uh, nice work. And then after that, they go to the convective zone, mm-hmm. where heat is transferred through the sun by convection, to finally the photosphere. Takes Which, of course, years. photo means... Light. light, so mm-hmm. that's when we start mm-hmm. sending those little lights out to us. And then they're um, hitting you in your arm on a lovely <laughs> summer's day, and um, you're getting sunburned. Exactly. So they've travelled 50 million years and 8 minutes just to give you a sunburn. Yeah. Well, Seems like a little bit of... <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work <laughs> just to get someone sunburned. Yeah. But, you know, also growing our food... You know, keeping us alive. That's yeah. the other role of these little <laughs> photons. Exactly. You know, photosynthesis. All you know, these, Earth, yeah, all these yeah, whatever. other essential processes other than sunburn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that seems so insignificant, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, sun. Yeah. You're the best. Two thumbs up. Next time, don't go outside, but like, and look, but you know. Have a little th- thumbs look. up to the sun. Don't look Don't at it. Look at the sun. But just give it a little passing thumbs up. Yeah, exactly. Like a, a no eye contact thumbs up. Yeah, exactly. Or, yeah. or put on a welder's mask if you've got one handy, and yeah. then you might give it a go. Okay. Can we move on. Yeah. Beautiful. So good facts, right. Duncan. Thank you so much. Now yeah. this one is all for you, Quill. Story oh. number three of the day, which is Me. plastic bags. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know I love the environment. Yep. I love animals. I've heard about that. And I love the ocean. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm a bit of a beach bum. Yeah. So I love the ocean, I love the environment, you I love live, animals. You live by the ocean. I live by the you ocean. You're living the dream. I live by a very beautiful ocean. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've mentioned this before in our podcast, how important it is about plastics. Plastics killing our oceans, such a waste, and we're being such a wasteful society. Smashing out plastic, just, oh, it's easy if I just grab everything in little single-use packets. Yeah. Now. Here's my hot take on plastic. Yeah. Not good. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> millions of <laughs> money spent on research. Seriously, Duncan I could, could have, have told you that, answer. but nothing. But you're right. It's not good. And so finally, people seem to be switching on to the fact that it's not good. And we've mentioned on the show before the the series, um, Craig Rude Castle series, um, War and Waste, West, yes. which has seems to have done a lot in sparking people to actually care. I think it won a Logie. Yeah, it did win a Logie. Yeah, well done, yeah, Craig Rude Castle. Yeah. Um, so, no, I'm of the big supermarket. I think last time we recorded, the big supermarkets were going to bring in a plastic bag ban. Mm-hmm. It's happened. It's, it's finally here. happened. The plastic of, bags are gone from the supermarket. As of July one. Was it? As of July one, I yeah, think. Cool. Yeah. Um, and it's fantastic. It is. It's great. So, have yeah. You, so, well, it wouldn't have impacted you at all, of course, because... I've been rolling green pla- on my own bags for yeah. um, at least, you know what, since I was a kid, but then as an adult, very thoroughly for at least a good 10 years. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, every now and, and then I had a slip up, maybe one bag or something, but I carry, oh. as I said, I carry like five bags in my car. I carry a small bag in my handbag. I carry a small bag in my backpack. So yep. wherever I'm going... Got my own bag. I've, I've um, recently stocked up on canvas bags yep. in, to, to, to get prepared, and yeah. I've twice as many as I used. So to. It's great. So we started on the plastic bags, and that's great. But there's still heaps of single-use plastic out there. So this mm. is a great one to cut out, and it's been done, which is awesome. And now the pressure is on supermarket chains to stop packaging things that don't need packaging. Mm. For example, an apple has a skin. A potato has a skin. Carrots have oh. skin. There's no yeah. need to put these things into plastic. Worse still, some of these things are then on a styrofoam who container. Puts, who puts an apple in plastic? There's, like, have you not seen the supermarkets? Have you not been to the supermarket ever? <laughs> I don't know the last time I saw an apple in plastic. So you can buy boxes, but this is probably because you bought, you purchase food for a single person. Yeah. So Thanks how- for robbing me. <laughs> <laughs> However, if you are purchasing for a couple or potentially more likely for a family, like a lot of our listeners might do. Yep. You want a box of apples, sure. right? So okay. they come in these small plastic, a lot of the time, a plastic tub in a plastic bag for like maybe eight I or ten apples. Those. Okay, yeah, that sort of flimsy plastic material. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah okay. I'm so, but not just apples, like zucchini, so many things. Mm. But all of these, but, I mean, nature made these things. I can vouch for this because I've had an apple in the bottom of my, of my bag for about two weeks and it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So they're made with the skin for a reason. Yeah. Um, Thanks, so God. that's the next pressure that's got to be going. It's things like that. Things yep. like toothbrushes and things like that. Those are, you know, they're, they're the next step after that. But the main one is take these beautiful vegetables and fruits and stuff like that out of the plastic. They don't need yeah. it. Yeah. I'll tell you what, my local supermarket does something really weird where they sell like individual carrots, so by weight, and mm. it's like two ninety nine a kilo or whatever. And they also sell carrots in a plastic bag. Yeah. Why? Why? Why would you? Seriously. Because people want more than one. Yeah, just then... Pick up more than one. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you got hands. I know. So, so yeah. So hopefully, I, I mean, I've been signing my petitions. I, I, I guess the people I'm friends with uh, on Facebook and stuff like that uh, have similar interests than I do. So that I get a friends, lot yeah. of environmental <laughs> petitions. Mm-hmm. Um, and so one of them is at the moment really pushing to remove the packaging from around fruit, and vegetables, and all those kind of things as well. Yeah. But straws, and we've talked about this on the show before, but. Hopefully, there's talk of cutting out use of straws completely yes. um, and all sorts of things like that, which is fantastic because, you know what, it's killing our marine life. It's literally just clogging up our ocean with all this junk, and it's yep. so unnecessary. You have a mouth. It's designed to be able to sip from a cup or even from your hand. Mm-hmm. You don't need a straw to get your drink from your drinking vessel yeah. to your mouth. What about those of us with copi- copious amounts of facial hair? Because that, okay. that's when a straw right. will come in handy. Like, so, if I'm drinking... But that being said, like, my, my moustache is nicely trimmed, if I do say so. It is. Well. It's very you. well groomed. <laughs> but that, if, you have a, if you have a long one and you're drinking something, it can get all up in there. Um, I've just realised the inanity of my point. you just, like, wipe point. it away? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, look, I'm not making a serious case for it. So you need a straw. I've, I've, had, I've literally talked to people who were just like, I have to drink my drink out of a straw. So you can also get metal straws. Mm. I mean, I have a metal straw that I keep in my handbag because, you know what? I like to enjoy a smoothie or a juice or when I'm at the markets on the weekend. Through some tungsten. And I threw it through, through a straw. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, my bag is also filled with sand because I live near the beach and I'm yes. just a sandy person. So I tend to get a bit sand in my first cup of my smoothie. Mm. But you can get them in little cotton bags. You can get all sorts of things like that. So for the uh, the aspiring, fabulous beard growers out there, <laughs> kids, when you get a bit older, 
you don't have to worry about it. You can still use a metal straw. Or Relief. just like a grown-up, learn how to drink without getting it all yeah, in your beard. seriously. <laughs> and just go and get the bags. They co- I think it was Woolies said that they are going to give out the bags, the canvas bags, for free. For free. They for did a it. week or something. Yeah, so making sure everyone kind of had a supply and a stock up so no one could complain they didn't have them. Yeah. There's also other types of bag that you can get. You know, you can get something called a jute bag mm-hmm. this thing which is like a heavy duty hessian yep so like hessian you can yeah. use string we used to use string bags you can get little mesh bags so mm-hmm. i have mesh bags for putting my fruit and vegetables in so i have little mesh bags and they literally fold out to be teeny tiny into a little pocket and then i get those out i have about 10 of those inside my big green bag and then i get those out to put all my fruit and vegetables in as well yeah one little just before we wrap up one little um thing that people keep talking about is the fact that people do reuse single-use plastic bags for their bin liners. They do. So I think what's happening here, this is my personal conspiracy, is that um, this entire uh, bag ban, plastic bag ban, has been instituted by Big Bin Liner. Big <laughs> Bin <laughs> The bin liner industry, which That's is, true. it's monolithic, quite frankly. It's mm-hmm. absolutely huge. It's huge. And so they've instituted this policy because they have the government, you know, they're playing them like, like puppets. <laughs> You laugh, but this is a legitimate thing that people really? have said. Yep. People have said, oh, now I have to buy. Here's the thing. For most of the time, you can, you should be, com- you should be composting if you can. You should be recycling. And if you're not buying all your things wrapped in plastic, you won't have that much rubbish. And mm. you can buy compostable, biodegradable bin bags, which is what which we have. Which we've talked about before. Yep. Um, and also... I mean, you can, if you do need to use a garbage bag, you can buy like a hundred of them for about two bucks. Yeah. So don't use that as an excuse because I can guarantee you that probably 90% or maybe 95% I'm making this percentage up. But I would say a good percentage of the bags don't get used as bin liners. They just yeah. get thrown in the bin. So that's single uses. I mean, there's totally. lots of other things people could tend to end about. For example, like takeaway containers and stuff like that. That one's a d- tricky one. That's one I struggle with bef- as well. I've, I've mentioned that before. Because mm, you, you can't just walk around with your takeaway containers, you know, prepped and handy whenever you were in the mood for takeaway. Just yeah, or around. like, I mean, if you're going to pick up takeaway, right, you can't be... I mean, maybe you can. Maybe you can rock up with your own Tupperware and say, can you please put it in here for me yeah. instead? Um, we, we do. That's one thing we haven't got to yet. We still get Thai probably mm. a night a week and uh but we reuse those plastic containers f- until they basically disintegrate yep. so they probably get a good 10 to 12 15 uses out of wow, them um and we use those in our cook uh, you know to put things in the fridge and stuff so yeah all right there we go so um final verdict plastic bag ban is good good yeah we confirm good? it's great Beautiful. and hopefully we what can would you start give it out of 10 11 11 out of 10 that's more yep. than you can have so yeah that's pretty good because like it's about time yeah <laughs> But I'm going I'm to take that back down to one now, because I've got that, mm-hmm. and now I want them to get rid of all the other plastic that they use for packaging. Yep. Okay. Cool. So we need more. <laughs> we need more. Yeah. It's a great start, but yes. we need more. Okay. Because there we want go. to have turtles and a Great Barrier Reef and dolphins and whales. Like, whales are dying with mm. stomachs filled with plastic, so totally. it's really important. Here's my hot take on whales. Love them. <laughs> all right. That's a wrap on Physics Twist for this week. Uh, thank you for joining us. <laughs> And don't forget, you can meet the wonderful people of of physics at your school, vacation centre, or birthday party. Just go to physicseducation.com.au. That's F-I-Z-Z-I-C-S, education.com.au. We spelt it wrong because we think we're funny. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's more science-y that way. Yep. Also, you can check out the Physics Ed official podcast run by Ben Newsom. Our awesome boss. Yep. He's a good good lad. Good good chap. Yep. Except he's older than us because he's our boss. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's true. Um, there you go. See you next time. Yeah. Anything about it? No. Well, and if you're enjoying listening to our pos- podcast, don't forget to rate us. Um, good ratings really help. And mm-hmm. if you don't like it, then let us know why. Yeah. Um, Send us an email at twist at physicseducation.com.au. You can always give us feedback there if you'd like. Yeah. Don't be nasty, though. We don't like nasty. Yeah. But honest is fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's it. Okay. Thanks for listening. Bye.